Congrats on a race well run. I did give you a fight. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 underrated songs from popular musicals. Now, do you know the number one reason behind all bad hair decisions? Love. For this list, we'll be looking at the most amazing tracks from musical productions that never quite get the love they deserve. We're limiting ourselves to one pick per musical, but plot points will be discussed, so beware of potential spoilers ahead. Did your favorite show tune make the cut? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. That's Rich, Newsies. I'm doing all right for myself, folks. I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. There are so many wonderful songs in Newsies. When you have Alan Menken on your team, that's bound to happen. But between all the King of New York, Something to Believe in, and Santa Fe talk, there's one song we think deserves a little more credit. But you telling me you don't want me around. That's Rich is performed relatively early in the first act by Meta Larkin, a theater owner who's friends with the main character. The song is big, brassy, and endlessly clever. It requires a powerful voice to make it work, but when it does, it has the power to bring the house down. Then I'll always be, and honey, yeah, that's right, that's right. Number 19, If I Didn't Believe in You, The Last Five Years. But what's it really about? Is it really about a party, Kathy? Can we please, for a minute, stop blaming and say what you feel? Over the years, Jason Robert Brown has written the music and lyrics for a number of amazing musicals. But with all his success on Broadway, a little off-Broadway show called The Last Five Years continues to be arguably his most popular. If I didn't believe in you and all of the 10,000 women you are. It features a number of wonderful solos for both tenors and altos, but today we want to focus on one we think deserves a little more credit. If I Didn't Believe in You is one of the show's best written songs. I will not fail so you can be comfortable, Kathy. I will not lose because you can't win. The lyrics have to be delivered with conviction and truth, while the person on the receiving end also has to be able to find the hubris and cruelty. It takes a special performer to make this one work. If I hadn't believed in you, I wouldn't have loved you at all. Number 18, The Pant Song, Be More Chill. I don't know what he wants, but I know what he needs. He'll need a dad so strong. Over the past few years, Be More Chill has become one of the new theater generation's quintessential musicals. It follows a teenager named Jeremy, who, in an effort to leave his loser status behind, takes a pill that helps teach him how to be cool. The show has many amazing songs sung from the perspective of a teenager, but one of the best numbers comes partly from an adult's point of view. The road gets muddy. Focus on your goal till the rough stuff's gone. When you love somebody, you put your pants on. Throughout the story, Jeremy's father is reeling from his divorce and refuses to put pants on. When Jeremy finally blows up at him for this, the dad does some real self-evaluation with the pants song. The tune is funny, heartfelt, and heartbreakingly honest. When you love somebody, the conclusion's foregone. When you love somebody, you put your big boy pants right on. You put your pants on. Number 17, Ireland, Legally Blonde. When I'm lonely or feeling dejected, I play this and it never fails. I pretend like I'm in Ireland with Enya and the Wales. If there's one show that's full of songs we can't help but belt out, it's Legally Blonde. However, we do think that this particular song should get more time on the belting schedule. In the movie Legally Blonde, Paulette is one of the most beloved characters. 
That fan adoration carried over to the musical, where the character is given one of the most underrated numbers. I pretend like I'm in Ireland, where the Irish bagpipes drone. Ireland may not make much sense at first, but Orfe, Paulette in the musical's original Broadway cast, delivers it with such exuberance and force that it doesn't matter. Talk about selling your message with gusto. Give my love to the Number 16, Kindergarten Boyfriend, Heather's The Musical. There was a boy I met in kindergarten. He was sweet, he said that I was smart. Much like the film it's based on, Heather's The Musical has become a bit of a cult classic. There are plenty of songs to latch onto, like Seventeen and Dead Girl Walking. Even some of the lesser-known tunes, like Lifeboat, are worth a play. The tiniest lifeboat Full of people I know. But our favorite overlooked song has to be Kindergarten Boyfriend. Didn't care if I was thin or pretty, and he was mine until we hit first grade. Ooh. It's sung by Martha, the outcast and most miserable figure in the show. The lyrics lament her lost relationship with a boy she met in kindergarten, and how social norms and popularity get in the way as kids grow up. It's deeply devastating, and one of the more earnest tunes in the show. We will fly through the dawn to a new kindergarten. Number 15, I Didn't Plan It, Waitress. Go ahead. Throw your rocks at me from your little glass house and then take off running. You're no better than me. The best part of Waitress is undoubtedly its music. With songs by Sarah Bareilles, there's not a dud in the bunch. Her lyrics and knack for melody shining through. But for some reason, I Didn't Plan It doesn't get nearly enough credit. Whether it's Borellis or original Broadway cast member Keala Settle lending their voices to the tune, it's an absolute banger. I didn't plan it, taking back what's been taken for granted, but I can't stand it. The character of Becky sings about an affair she's having while still married. With a beautiful melody that sails up into her register, the number allows her to express her desire to live free of judgment. She might have done something wrong, but she's made the choice that's best for her. To Number 14, Paciencia y Fe, In the Heights. Hi, Mama. The summer's hottest day. Paciencia y Fe. Paciencia y Fe. Though Lin-Manuel Miranda has become synonymous with Hamilton, real theater heads remember that In the Heights is also magnificent. Wasn't like today, you'd say, There are so many tracks to write home about. From solos like Breathe to big ensemble numbers like Blackout, each tune has a groove to it. But one of the film and musical's least popular songs is actually one of its best. Paciencia y Fe spotlights Abuela Claudia as she recounts her journey to the United States. Olga Meredes, who reprised the role in the film version, sings it with heart and strength. It's a standout moment. Number 13, Doubt Comes In, Hades Town. Doubt comes in. Doubt comes in. How cold it's blowing. 
In 2019, Hadestown took the Broadway world by storm. At the Tony Awards that year, the musical earned a whopping 14 nominations and took home eight wins. One of those wins was Best Original Score for Aeneas Mitchell. Mitchell gave us great numbers like Wait For Me and The Stunning Flowers. Is anybody listening? I open my mouth and nothing comes out. But the one that flies under the radar far too often is Doubt Comes In. Who do I think I am? Who am I to think that she would follow me? into the cold and dark again. Where is she? The musical follows the tale of Eurydice and Orpheus. If you know anything about that story, you know that Orpheus makes the mistake of turning around, dooming Eurydice. This is the song that plays during that climactic moment, and it more than lives up to the challenge of capturing the gravity of the situation. I'm right behind you. Number 12, Something Bad Is Happening, Falsettos. Bachelors arrive sick and frightened. They leave weeks later unenlightened. Without a doubt, Falsettos itself is one of the most underrated musicals of the past few decades. It's funny and entertaining, while still managing to say something extremely poignant about important topics like the HIV AIDS crisis, a fine and difficult line to walk. That moment in our history is dealt with in a relatively direct way through something bad is happening. But not a word about the killer. I like the ball gowns, but Jesus Christ, something bad is happening. The song is mainly sung by a doctor close to the central family as she tries to cope with the number of gay men coming to the hospital ill. It's the first time that the audience really becomes aware that AIDS will be a major factor in the plot, and the number itself is harrowing. Look, a virus has been found. Stories that go underground. Something bad is spreading, spreading, spreading. Wrong. Number 11, No More, Into the Woods. No more questions, please. No more tests. The worst crime in musical theater history came to light in 2014. That's when the film version of Into the Woods was released, and we learned that they cut no more. Into the Woods deals in large part with what we pass down to our children and the responsibility we have to them. For what you have left undone and more, what you've left behind. Our main protagonist, the baker, works through this directly for most of the show. He can't deal with the mistakes his own father made, and they're affecting his ability to grow and by the same token raise his kid. How do you ignore all the witches, all the curses, all the wolves, all the lies, the false hopes, the goodbyes, the reverses? He finally tackles this head-on during No More, where he speaks directly to his dad's ghost. In typical Stephen Sondheim fashion, the music and lyrics are beautifully emotive and deep. No more. Number 10, A Step Too Far, Aida. Aida, with music and lyrics by Elton John and Tim Rice, might have some of the most entertaining musical theater songs in the history of the genre. Rice and John combined numerous styles of music, including rock, reggae, and Motown, creating a new type of sound for the show. While A Step Too Far does feature some of those new elements, it also captures the melodrama and romanticism inherent in the production. It's a trio that gives each character time to tell us how they're feeling, before dropping into a beautiful harmony that builds to a stunning crescendo. 
As far as we're concerned, it should be on everyone's radar. Oh, did I take a step too far? Number 9. A Little Fall of Rain, Les Miserables. Don't you fret, Monsieur Marius. I don't feel any pain. We love red and black and empty chairs at empty tables. And I can hear them now. The very words that they have sung. But a little fall of rain is something else. Eponine is shot in a frantic moment and sings her final song as she dies in Marius' arms. With her life at an end and Mary is holding her, Eponine can't seem to feel any pain, however. And you will keep me safe. And you will keep me close. And rain will make the flowers grow. While Eponine's final breaths are with someone she loves, the moment is bittersweet since he doesn't truly love her back. The rain, in effect, becomes a poetic stand-in for all of Eponine's troubles, which seem trivial in her last seconds. In a musical full of tragic moments, a little fall of rain shines thanks to its clever wordplay and subtlety. And rain will make the flowers, we'll make the flowers. Number 8. Requiem Dear Evan Hansen why should I play this game of pretend? Remembering through a secondhand sorrow. One of the show's most underrated songs has to be good for you. Stop it, stop it, just let me It surpassed only by Requiem. In the wake of Connor's death, each of his family members respond in their own way. His sister Zoe remembers Connor as an aggressive and mean person and chooses not to mourn a monster. Father Larry doesn't understand his son's depression and ultimately sees Connor as ungrateful for his wealthy upbringing. Everything wasted, nothing to say. Connor's mother Cynthia, however, finds comfort in Evan's fictitious email exchange with her son. Though she's able to move forward with her life, Cynthia unfortunately only does so through a lie. By showing each character's personality through their reaction to Connor, Requiem is a surprisingly revealing song. I will sing no Requiem tonight. Oh. Number 7. Razzle Dazzle, Chicago. Give them the old Razzle Dazzle, Razzle Dazzle up. Mr. Cellophane might be about feeling invisible, but that's surely a song we could never forget. Mr. Cellophane, cause you can look right through me, walk right by me. So let's focus on Razzle Dazzle. As Billy Flynn prepares Roxy for her court appearance, he sings about the power of wowing audiences. While Razzle Dazzle sounds like it's about show business, Flynn's advice has more to do with winning over juries. Through Roxy's love of performance, Billy explains how she can confuse judges and make people believe any story she wants. What if your hinges all are resting? What if, in fact, you're just disgusting? Razzle dazzle them, and they'll never catch flies. Despite the classic Broadway tones of this track, its themes about law tactics are actually quite smart. Though Billy's number is overshadowed by all the strong women in Chicago, Razzle Dazzle is a deceptively fun tune that highlights the power of good acting. And I'll make you a <laughs> Number 6. Run and Tell That, Hairspray. I can't see people look at me and only see the color of my face. 
after Seaweed meets Tracy and Penny, he breaks into an exciting number about fighting racism. Rather than asking for acceptance, Run and Tell That find Seaweed shouting with pride for the color of his skin. He praises how interesting people of color can be, while comparing them to fruit and chocolate. Inez's solo is even more energetic, as the song kicks into a bridge about finding equality between everyone. Run and Tell That has the same upbeat funk of other Hairspray tracks, but its over-the-top performances and socially conscious lyrics are some of the musical's most engaging. Number 5. Thank goodness, Wicked. Oh, what a celebration we'll have today. Glinda celebrates how well her life is turning out, but there's an unsettling notion behind her happiness. Her marriage has her feeling happier than ever, but she knows that her fiance isn't truly in love with her. But I couldn't be happier. Simply couldn't be happier. Glinda says she has her dream life, but she's also torn up about leaving Alphaba behind. Amongst all of her doubt, the seemingly excited villagers are actually spreading rumors behind Glinda's back. There are bridges you cross you didn't know you crossed until you crossed. Though March of the Witch Hunters is a great ensemble piece, showcasing the most underrated of cast members. <laughs> Glinda's song has a much more complicated emotion to it. While she's often seen as the popular witch, Thank Goodness shows more nuance and depth to Glinda. We also shouldn't forget about the raucous ensemble numbers like Dancing Through Life. Number 4. Notes and Prima Donna, The Phantom of the Opera The Phantom and Christine have some great duets, our favorite of which is The Point of No Return. But the musical's most overlooked number has to be Notes Prima Donna. Andre and Firma are losing their minds reading notes from The Phantom, which critique Carlotta's performances. The letter hilariously insists that Carlotta play the page boy in the opera, since it's a silent role. The role of the page boy is silent, which makes my casting in a with Carlotta's ego broken, Firma and Andre start singing her praise to get her to perform again. Prima Donna, first lady on the stage, your devotees are on their knees to implore you. Every line plays to her addiction with fame and becomes so exaggerated that soon the entire city is singing to Carlotta. Between Phantom's comedic insults and the backhanded compliments of Prima Donna, Notes is easily one of the show's funniest moments. <laughs> Number 3. The Election of 1800, Hamilton The Election of 1800 can we get back to politics? Please! Yo. It's hard to figure out which Hamilton tune is most underrated. We came close to choosing Hurricane, Your Obedient Servant, and Farmer Refuted. Yeah, he he have you all unravel at the sound of screams, but the revolution is coming. The have nots are gonna win this. It's hard to listen to you with a straight face. But we settled on the election of 1800. 
we see Aaron Burr starting to take action, while Thomas Jefferson worries about dealing with the public. Jefferson cleverly rants about knowing where France is, while also revealing why people find him indelible. Alexander Hamilton drops poetic lines about endorsing Jefferson, which brilliantly summarize letters from the real Hamilton. Country is facing a difficult choice. Go! And if you were to ask me why promote, go! Jefferson has my vote. All the chorus chants of Well I'll Be Damned match the building excitement of the song's story and beats. The condensed and entertaining history of the election of 1800 is a true wonder of pop writing. Shit, it is crazy that the guy who comes in second gets to be vice president. Ooh, you know what? We can change that. You know why? Why? Because I'm the president. Number two, something's coming. West Side Story. There's something due any day I will know right away. Tony is looking to leave gang life behind and starts shaking with anticipation at where his life could go next. The raw sense of happiness and life that grips Tony comes through as much in his shouted lines as his whispered ones. He even swings some vocals and creates huge crescendos on others. Around the corner, whistling down the river. It's also interesting to see Tony express his joy through not only his singing, but his wild body movements too. And something great. Is coming. Who knows? Something's Coming is an exhilarating listen because of how well it matches its music to its emotions. It's not West Side Story's only underrated track either. Who could forget The Dance at the Gym and A Boy Like That I Have a Love? One thing I know! A boy who Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Will I Rent Will I lose my dignity? Steve begins singing to his disease support group, airing out real issues in his life through song. Though the looping lyrics of Will I feel simple, they're used to capture the vicious cycle the characters find themselves in. Will I Wake Tomorrow is repeated heavily throughout the song, as a reflection of both limited time and trying to find optimism. While the solo intro starts the song on a pretty dire note, the additions from the chorus help keep the song positive. Through its mix of desperation and unity, Will I presents a realistic and memorable look at life with AIDS. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.